this lecture video of Group 11 on Scobic's model of curriculum development, and this time we'll give you its difference among other curriculum model. At the end of this presentation, the viewers will be able to first analyze the components of Scobic's model, second examine the strengths and weaknesses of Scobic's model, lastly evaluate the model's appropriateness in the Philippines setting. Before we go deep into the discussion, let us know first the person behind this model. Malcolm Skelvick is one who developed Skelvick's model. He is a world authority on education. He published many papers, articles, books, and reports on academic issues such as curriculum theory and developmental education policy. Some of the books he authored are School-Based Curriculum Development and Vocational Quest. Skelvick's model was developed in 1976. It presents a dynamic view of curriculum development. What do we mean when we say dynamic model? In dynamic model, curriculum is not considered as linear or sequence. It can start in any element or proceed in any order. The curriculum elements are semi-flexible and interactive. The model claims that for school-based curriculum development to work effectively, five steps are required in the curriculum process and these are situational analysis, goal formulation, program building, interpretation and implementation, and last is evaluation. So let me give you an idea on what each process is by starting with number one, situational analysis. It's the process of examining factors that exist in the environment or society where the curriculum is going implemented. This involves careful observation and analyzation of the situation or environment. Skillbex model describes situational analysis phase both external and internal to the school. External includes culture, parents, expectation, contribution of teacher support system, while internal analysis includes student abilities and need, teacher skills and knowledge, and other. Number two, goal formulation. Skillbex assign a decision-making role to the teachers, senior staff, and principals in the development of objectives for the school-based curriculum. Number three. Program building comprises of selection of the subject matter of learning, the sequencing of teachers' learning episodes, the development of staff, and choice of supplementary materials. Number four, interpretation and implementation. It is where practical problems are anticipated and hopefully will be resolved. And lastly, number five, evaluation. Skillback perceived the role of teachers in evaluation phase to ensure curriculum reconstruction. As a result of our reading, we discover some of the strengths and weaknesses of Scalebeck model. Let us first talk about the strength of this model. First, it is claimed by the proponent of this model that this is a realistic way of handling curriculum because it sees the process of dynamic in it. Second, curriculum developer can start with any of the phase because it does not presuppose linear progression of each component. Third, the model offers flexibility as it allows curriculum developer to change the order of planning to move to and fro amongst the curriculum elements. Fourth, by avoiding the obsession with writing objective and hinder behavioral objective, and the developers are free to be more creative. Lastly, the curriculum evaluation ensures continual reconstruction of curriculum. The feedback provided helps to make the curriculum reliable to the needs of the learners. Now we'll move on to the weaknesses of this model. Number one, curriculum developers will get confused on what stage they need first to be done in developing a curriculum. Number two, this model doesn't follow a sequential order which results to confusion rather than clarity. Number three, since it has no sequential order or pattern of curriculum development, it seems it lacks direction at all. Number four, Curriculum developers need a lot of time for discussion in determining what phase they will begin first in developing curriculum unlike other models. Developers already know the flow of the curriculum. And lastly, lack emphasis in the construction and use of objectives because objectives must be stated in order 
to be effective. For conclusion, according to CAN 2020, the skill-based model is more suitable and less dysfunctional approach in teaching situational analysis wherein the developers can be flexible and creative in developing curriculum.